It's Monday, the 22nd of May. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel and airplane incidents and accidents are happening faster than I can possibly keep up with as we get into the good flying season. Remember back in our Air Force days, the 101 critical days of summer? Well, I'm going to add to that briefing. Remember that briefing we used to have to give? Don't drink and drive. Don't stick your hand in a running lawnmower. And I'm going to add, stay off of the Blanco Lirio channel during this busy summer flying season. But first, I want to cover the crash of the F-18 in Zaragoza, Spain, as this video may be demonetized by YouTube. And we'll get to these other accidents in a second or separate update. On Saturday, the 20th of May, a Spanish Air Force McDonnell Douglas EF-18M Hornet assigned to the 15th Squadron of the Spanish Air Force was destroyed when it crashed during an air show at Zaragoza Airport in Spain. The pilot ejected safely, a very dangerous low-level ejection. What the media typically plays is just the last couple of seconds of the crash sequence, which really tells us little or nothing about what led up to the crash. But we do have a longer, more grainy video of the events leading up to the crash. And this is what may get demonetized on YouTube for either A, copyright, or B, suitable content not suitable for all advertisers. Or I've even had YouTube demonetize this stuff for excessively violent video gameplay. No, folks, this is for real. Here's a grainy distant video of the setup to the maneuver, the maneuver itself, and then the loss of control. We'll just roll through it and then we'll talk about it. The aircraft's way up here. Here it is. Here we have the successful ejection just just before impact. And the, the problem with those sort of low altitude ejections, even if it's successful, is the high possibility of floating with under the parachute into the fireball and having the parachute burn up and then fall to death. But fortunately, this pilot made it out with non-life-threatening injuries. So what this appears to be, if you've watched these F-18 demos before, this is a high alpha maneuver. It's sort of a modified Cobra maneuver. But what strikes me in this setup is first, the altitude <laughs> right here is pretty low to start this maneuver to begin with. He pitches up to the high AOA for the Cobra maneuver and then pitches over. The engines go fairly quiet right in here. The whole idea with a Cobra maneuver is uh, that thing you see on the movies all the time, Top Gun, where you're being pursued and you transition to a very sudden high G, high alpha. Now, if done properly, the Cobra maneuver should just get it up to about a negative 120 degrees of AOA and slow the aircraft down quite suddenly without climbing. Now, in the air shows, you'll see quite often the aircraft climb, but uh, in, in actual combat, you'd want to just slow the aircraft down suddenly, have <coughs> your, your, the guy pursuing you overshoot, and then you'd lower the nose, and then you take him out, theoretically, especially in the movies. But again, in air shows, you'll see him climb often. And then... Remember, I've always said at zero Gs, you cannot stall an aircraft at zero Gs. So it's going to be a high G onset, upwards of seven or eight Gs, right up to the maximum limit of the airframe to get that high AOA going. And then you're going to push over to a nearly zero G condition to get the nose over. But in this situation, you hear the engines kind of get quiet. And when you're making that transition, uh, it, you are also subject to disrupting the airflow over one or both of the engines. Now, if you compressor stall or have a problem with one of those engines, 
high thrust, uh, low airspeed, you're going to get quite a bit of adverse yaw. Can't tell in this situation if that's the case here or if this was just simply a case of loss of control, or was the guy trying to do sort of a flat spin pirouette maneuver intentionally following this Cobra maneuver, and he was simply too low of altitude to successfully pull that off. G-induced loss of consciousness. Uh, yeah, you can certainly black out doing this part, but this pilot successfully ejected and it looks like he was trying to recover the aircraft the whole time so i don't think this was a case of g-induced loss of consciousness besides at that low of altitude with that little amount of time you would not recover from a g-lock in time to eject or even begin to save that aircraft if you g-lock it's going to take you 20 to 30 seconds to recover enough to be able to figure out where you are and fly the aircraft you simply would not have enough time to recover if you uh, G-locked yourself out at this altitude. So there's the loss of control of the aircraft. It starts that flat spin maneuver. Well, he got the nose down pretty good on that. And right about here, yeah, he could recover if he had about another 1,000 or 2,000 feet of altitude. He makes the decision to eject rather late and he's darn lucky he didn't float right into that fireball and uh, burn up his parachute and plummet. So he made it without life-threatening injuries. A high AOA maneuver gone wrong at Zaragoza. Another interesting thing to find out would be, uh, does this F AF-18 have the latest block number of um, software for the flight controls that, that help help the pilots handle these high AOA maneuvers. Like to hear in the comments section below, especially from UF-18 drivers. What do you think happened here? Thanks so much for your support. See you over on Patreon. I'll get the update on the latest rash of accidents out here to you next. See you here.